might have been there. Many of us experience addiction as the loss of our freedom to choose. It's the addiction that seems to be making our choices for us in the way we situations, circumstances, and feelings that you have used harm. Dash. Full behavior to try to avoid. Name the emotions, sensations, and thoughts that come to mind. When you abstain, are there troubling memories, shame, grief, unmet needs behind the craving? How can you meet these with calm, dash, passion and patience? What things did you give up in your clinging to impermanent end? Unreliable solutions. For example, did you give up relationships? Why? Dash. Financial security, health, opportunities, legal standing, or other I am. Dash important things to maintain your addictive behaviors. What made the addiction more important to you than any of these things you gave? Up. Are you clinging to any beliefs that fuel craving and aversion? Beliefs that deny the truth of impermanence or beliefs about how things in life should be. What are they? If you have experienced discrimination-based trauma or social injuries, dash, ties, how can you meet the experience in a way that honors your true self without creating more pain and suffering? The third noble truth, ending the suffering. It is possible to end our suffering when we come to understand the nature of our craving and realize that all our experiences are tempo. Dash. Rary by nature, we can begin a more skillful way to live with the visit. Dash. Is faction that is part of being human. We don't need to be torn apart by our thoughts and feelings that say, I have to have more of that, or all. Oh anything to get rid of this. The third noble truth states that the end of craving is possible. Each of us has the capacity for recovery. We are responsible for our own actions and for the energy we give our thoughts and feelings. This means we have some control over how we respond to our own suffering, which is the unpleasant emotions take place within us, we create them through our response to experience. We don't need to depend on anyone or anything else to remove the causes. 
of our suffering. We may not be able to control anything out there, but we can learn to choose what we think, say, and do. We come to under dash stand that if our thoughts, words, and actions are driven by greed, hatred, or confusion, we are creating suffering within suffering. If we let go of these attitudes, we can lessen suffering or even create freedom. We can choose to give up these causes of disturbing and unpleasant emotions. This is the true empowerment and freedom of recovery, recognizing that happiness and suffering are up to us, based on how we choose to respond to our experiences. Inquiry of the Third Noble Truth Colon. What makes it so hard to quit? What resources are available to help you abstain and recover? List reasons to believe you can recover. Also list your doubts. What? Might the wise and compassionate part of you, your Buddha Nam, Dash, Ture, say about these doubts? Practice, letting go, of something small. Notice that the craving, doesn't last and that there's a little sense of relief when you let it pass. That's a little taste of freedom. The fourth noble truth. The path. The Buddha taught that by living ethically, practicing metta, dash, tion, and developing wisdom and compassion, we can end the suffering. We create by resisting, running from, and misunderstanding reality. The fourth noble truth is the path that summarizes the S dash sential elements to recovery, or awakening, and leads to the ending of suffering. It provides an instructive practice for investigating in become dash being aware of the conditioned responses we cling to. These are the eight factors of the path. One wise understanding 2 wise intention 3 wise speech 4 wise action 5 wise livelihood 6 wise effort 7 wise mindfulness 8 wise concentration these eight factors can be divided into three groups the wisdom group of understanding and intention. The ethics group of speech, action, and livelihood. The concentration group of effort, mindfulness, and concentration. Each of us will understand and practice each aspect of this. Eightfold path in our own way. We develop our wisdom, ethical practice and concentration as far as we can in any given moment. As we come to a deeper understanding of the Four Noble Truths, we're able to bring more effort and concentration to letting go of our greed, hatred, and confusion. Our ethical development will cause us to reflect more deeply on these sources of our unwise actions. The Eightfold Path is a way of life that each of us follows and practices to the best of our current understanding and capacity. The Path can serve as both a religious and non-religious journey. For many people, their Buddhist practice includes prayer, worship, and ceremony. It is up to you to decide whether to include these practices as part of your recovery path. Inquiry of the Fourth Noble Truth. Colon. Understanding that recovery and the ending of suffering is possible. What is your path to recovery and ending the suffering of addiction? Be honest about the challenges you might face, and the tools and 
skills you will use to meet those challenges. What behaviors can you change to more fully support your recovery? What does it mean to you to take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha for your recovery? The Eightfold Path. We've found that it's useful to make inquiry and investigation. A normal part of our everyday routine, especially when we're feeling un- dash. Comfortable emotions are facing tough decisions. We can take a moment to pause and sit with what we're experiencing, identify it, and simply allow it to be with compassion and without judgment. Then use the Eightfold path is a guide to go inward and forward by asking ourselves How can I apply the Eightfold path? It can also be beneficial to use the Different sections of the Eightfold path as an end of day reflection Wise understanding As we engage in the world, rather than withdraw from it, we can Use wise understanding to live without clinging, attachment, or craving. By paying attention to our actions and the results of those actions, we can begin to change where our choices are leading. If we intend to act in ways that have positive results, and if we're aware of the true intention and the nature of our actions, then you'll see better results, better meaning less suffering and less harm. The word karma in Sanskrit translates to what are actions free. Dash 8. Any intentional act, mental, verbal, or physical, is a kind of karma. Skillful or wise actions strengthen our sense of balance, kindness, compassion, loving, and equanimity. When we act unskillfully or run, dash, wisely, when we steal, lie, take advantage of somebody else, or cause, intentional harm based on our own craving or delusions, it creates, an immediate sense of imbalance. It fights with our intention to avoid, harming others. Karma is determined by our intention and applies to any volitional or purposeful action. The result of our volitional actions may be an increase in our happiness or may lead to additional suffering. There is no actor apart from action, and there is no action without intention. Unskillful actions leave us less able to meet the next challenge or pain we face. For example, when we steal, we have to immediately justify to ourselves why our greed was more important than the harm we caused. By taking, we must create a cover story, hide our actions, and adjust to the fear of getting caught. Ultimately, if the theft gets discovered, we might have to deal with financial or legal consequences, or face a lack of trust from our community. Similarly, when we're 